in the old days, work had to be done manually using some of the mechanics that we've talked about so far this semester. But as technology developed, it became easier to rely on electronics and machines to get those same tasks done. But those machines had to know what to do if the task was going to be automated. They had to be programmed. At the end of this unit, you and a few other people are going to be building a machine that completes a task by itself. I guess we should probably talk about programming then. It's time to learn to think like a computer. Each line of code in a program has its job. It's either a command, a condition, an organization, or timing. When you start a program in Robot C, the first step is always to set up your motors and sensors. At the top of the program, there's a button that says motors. It should bring a drop-down list. From that list, you should be able to select motors and sensors setup. In this window, you can add any motors, analog sensors, and digital sensors your Cortex will be using. Each item can be named and labeled by its port. You can name your item however you want, but be descriptive, since you might have more than one of the same type. Once you have your sensors and motors in here, we can get back to the program. Robot C automatically adds your motors and sensors to the code. This is called the pragma. The pragma tells the program what to do with certain information, like the names of your motors. The main part of your program is called the task main. Anything you want your program to do physically goes in the task main. Notice that Robot C has certain color codes for certain types of code. Underneath the line that says task main, there's this bracket. Brackets are used to organize code. This bracket begins the main task, and the bracket at the bottom closes the main task. If you look at this code, you'll notice that most of the lines have these semicolons at the end of it. A semicolon tells Robot C that a command has been completed, or that everything that the command is asking Robot C to do is there. If you forget a semicolon, your program's probably not going to work, because Robot C is not going to recognize the end of a program code. Another thing that we need to think about when we set up our program is formatting. Semicolons and brackets are useful for making sure the code actually works, but we have to work with other people when we write program codes, so it's really important that we format it in a way that's readable. There are two ways that we can do this. Adding comments helps readers understand what your code does. You should have a comment next to each line of code. Comments are in green and can be added by typing double slash. As you can see, your code will, eventually, get pretty complicated. Your program may have sections nested inside of your task main based on conditional statements, such as if the light sensor reads a value of 500, then it will do a certain task. So because we have commands inside of conditions inside of commands, it's really important that we format the code in a way that's readable. In addition to writing comments next to each line of code to make it better to understand, it's important that we indent the sections that are embedded in a command. It makes it easier to understand what goes where, and where the beginning of a bracket and where the end of a bracket is for a particular part of a code. For the purposes of our code at the beginning of our understanding, our task main is going to be the only one that has brackets, so everything in our program needs to be bumped out one level from the task main. Once you know how to format and set up your code, we can start telling it what to do. Since we're using VEX, there aren't a whole lot of commands to send to our robot. Our commands are limited to things like moving motors, moving servos, timing conditions, turning on lights, and a few other things. VEX uses a format called natural language, so determining how to set up our commands is actually pretty straightforward. The command for a motor is called start motor motor speed. Start motor is the actual command, and the parameters are in the parentheses. Parameters are the conditions that run the command. The first parameter is the name of the motor, and the second is the speed of the motor. The speed can be set anywhere from negative 127, which is full speed backwards, to 127, which is full speed forward. To make the motor stop, we use a different command. The stop command is called stop motor motor. 
There is no speed parameter on the stop motor command because it should be a speed of zero. For servos, we have a similar command, set servo servo angle. There's no speed in this parameter because this command uses angles. Servos snap to angles set by you and aren't dependent on speed. There are a few other commands that you can use in Robot C, but you'll discover them as you continue to explore your VEX kit in the coming weeks. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video with us. We hope you learned something. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. For more awesome engineering videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.